we're also in that t portion of the non-playing season where contracts get done and place mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously have ripple effects throughout the entire league and Justin Jefferson's contract clearly is that and I want to talk about yep. two teams that places uh, uh, now the, uh, right in the middle of this pond of the ripple effect and one is the Dallas Cowboys and CeeDee Lamb. What is going on yeah. there? Why why aren't the Cowboys more active in getting something done right away instead of letting the market reset itself multiple times over from A.J. Brown and Amon Ross St. Brown to now Justin Jefferson? Doesn't make any sense, right? No. Like, and it's not just CD either, by the way, Rich. It's, it's also um, It's also Micah Parsons because Justin Jefferson didn't just reset the – receiver market he reset the market for non-quarterbacks and beating out nick bosa and getting to 35 million where nick was at, 20, at at 34 you know now micah parsons ask is going to be to leapfrog justin jefferson which you know if you're micah parsons now do you ask for 40 million per um i think you'd be well within your rights to do that um and cd lamb like may not be the receiver justin jefferson is but he had a borderline historic year last year what was it 135 catches and 1700 yards just insane right well he definitely so, has ability to stake claim to saying he should beat justin jefferson's contract albert he definitely yeah, has that you could say that yeah i mean no like he doubt. hasn't been he hasn't had he hasn't had the consistent like you know like he hasn't done it four years in a row the way justin Je i mean Jeff justin jefferson's like sort of in a class by himself yes. as far as how he's produced over the first four years. But yeah, I mean, where CD lamb is right now and where he was last year, you know, certainly you could say he's in that class. And so, you know, now you're talking about an outlay of what, like 70, 75 million per year between the two of those guys. And you haven't even gotten to the fact that your quarterback's in a contract year. And, you know, you connect that to the comment that Jerry Jones made at the start of the off season, all in, this is an amazing fact. I, I was trying to kind of, because nobody would argue the Cowboys are uh, have been a bad franchise for the last 15 years, right? Nobody would argue that. Um, so I, I, I sort of thought through this over the last two days, and I, I want to look something up that kind of would encapsulate it. This is an amazing fact that I was able to figure out, right? So since 2007, right, which is when was Wade Phillips' first year in Dallas, the Cowboys are number six in wins in the NFL, Okay. They're ahead of the Eagles. They're ahead of the Chiefs. They're ahead of like some big time, big time teams, right? So over the last that's 17 seasons, they are sixth in the NFL in wins. And they have the fourth longest conference championship game drought. And the only teams that have longer droughts than them, they haven't been in the conference championship game in a longer period of time. The NFL's final four are the Dolphins, Commanders, and Lions. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, think about that. You have the six most wins, yet you have the fourth longest drought not having been in the final four. So what does that tell you about where they are? It's They've been close. They've had teams that can compete on that level. But are they striking when the iron's hot? And, you know, they ran into this with they ran into this with Zach Martin where they had to pay him. They had to pay a tax on him because they waited on him. And they ran into this with Demarcus Lawrence. And certainly the last time around, they ran into this with Dak Prescott. And I just can't wrap my head around why they aren't, why, why, why they haven't been more aggressive with these teams, especially when there's a team right there in their division. And we've talked about this, Rich, with the Eagles, how the Eagles have gotten ahead consistently of the market on so many players, and they've been able to keep teams together as a result of it. So I don't know what's going to happen with C.D. Lamb and, and Micah Parsons over the next two or three months, and, and Dak Prescott passed that, but... Um, you know, I certainly know like the ship sailed now as far as way, as far as being ag aggressive, you know, like, cause that market has shifted and Justin Jefferson getting paid was sort of the big piece. And, you know, you wait a little bit longer than Jamar Chase is going to get paid. And you don't think Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson are a cahoots on the contract situation. Then you don't know their relationship. You know, Jamar, J Jamar Chase probably gets 36, 37 million a year. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.